Hello and welcome to Bosch Professional Live UK. I'm Chris Murray. And I'm Danny Parks. So I hope you uh, enjoyed the live stream we did a couple of weeks ago where we did the workshop tour. However, we're doing something well, back to our regular program, aren't we, Danny? Yep, as we showed um, over the last couple of weeks with the workshop tour, we have quite an extensive range of measuring tools. So today, um, as promised, we're going to do laser measures, so our entire range of laser measuring tools. Mm -hmm. And as always, remember this is a live stream and we want to make sure we get your questions in. So feel free to pop your questions into the chat. Lizzie behind the desk will pick out all the best questions or all the difficult questions to give to Danny and I <laughs> and we'll do our best to answer them live on stream. If we can't or we need to come back to it, it's fine. Danny and I will pick those up in the comments after the live stream. So, uh, what should we start off with? We probably talk about well, why, why would you want a laser measure when you've got your good old trusted tape measure? It's fine, it works, it does its job, it's, yep. it's analog. Yep, obviously you've got a finite length of measurement you can get out of a tape measure. True. Um, short of very large oversized tape <laughs> measures. Um, so anything beyond five, 10, 15 meters, um, a laser measure comes into its own to be fair. Um, anything up to or actually 150 meters in our range mm -hmm. at the moment. So yeah, there's, um, there's some uh, really good advantages to obviously having one. Yeah, well, I mean, one of the disadvantages of a tape measure, often if you're measuring large distances, there might need to be two of you. So True. the investment of not having to have to rely on a colleague mm -hmm. to help you out or prank you is not good as well. Being able to do certain jobs on your own with a laser measure has that benefit. Not only is it typically going to be quicker and faster, it's also probably going to be a little bit more accurate or a lot more accurate depending on what you're doing. Um, when it comes to applications for laser measures, there's quite a few actually, isn't there? Yeah, it's not just about length. Um, obviously, you can calculate, self-calculate these machines do, um, regarding area and volume as well as well as some other neat features that we've got mm -hmm. in some of the higher range products. And um, yeah, yeah, and importantly, it's not, it's, there's a lot of applications for our GLM or digital laser measures. It's not just what you think you might need for like measuring rooms. If you're a carpenter, you might want it for measuring large bits of wood. If yep. perhaps you're a surveyor, or maybe if you're looking at renovation, you might need to measure some stuff. If you're a painter or you're a HVAC, air conditioning, all these tools have some mm. features that might be of some benefit to you and your trade. Yeah, I mean, even when it comes to stuff like swimming pool and tennis courts, mm. things need to be measured out over large distances, then perfect. Exactly. So let's, uh, let's get started. Let's start off with our entry level machine. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through the entire range of our current GLM models. Let's start mm. off with the first one, Danny, which is? Right, so first off, we've got our entry level machine. This is the GLM 40. So. Um, as it mentions in the, in the name, GLM st stands for Professional Laser Measure. Uh, 40 denotes the maximum, um, maximum distance this will do, so it's 40 meters. So yeah, it's quite, a, quite a long distance for an entry level machine really. Mm -hmm. Probably cover most people's um, requirements when it comes to these sort of, sort of machines. Really simple to understand, um, not so many buttons on here, but again, it's intelligently designed so you don't need that much input to it. Um, so it's accurate. You can do measurements on this from seven, sorry, from 15 uh, centimeters all the way up to 40 meters. Um, it's got a measurement accu accuracy of plus or minus one and a half millimeters um, over a 10 meter distance. So again, that's a very low percentage of, of, of nominal uh, reading there. Um, it's also uh, quite a good IP rating. We'll cover all the IP mm -hmm, ratings a little right. bit later on. So this has got a reasonable IP rating. Um, it takes two uh, AAA batteries, so readily available from any uh, any shop. You can see the fitting at the back here is quite straightforward, just normal, same as you would your TV remote, I suppose. Um, there, um, it's quite small in size. Um, yeah, I mean, Perfect. you've covered base, you've covered all the fundamentals. Mm. Uh, we might as well talk a little reference about IP rating. So this is a IP54 rated product. Yes. Uh, when it when IP for those who aren't aware, uh, IP is for ingress protection, uh, and this is a good standard to start off with at 54. So the first value is five, which is for dust ingress protection. Mm -hmm. That means it's virtually dust proof. Although some dust might be able to possible to get into the tool, but it will have no detrimental effect on the tool. So it doesn't affect the functionality, but it's not 100% dust proof. Mm. The second value is the four, and that's to do with how much the uh, water ingress protection. This isn't waterproof, that's important to know. Uh, not at this price point. Water can get in it, it can survive splashes, but it isn't designed to be waterproof to that degree. Mm. However, when you see some of our later products, you'll see the IP rating change. But it's probably important at this point to say, regardless, these machines at IP54 are pretty much pretty good, pretty much fine 
yeah. down on the job site. Yeah, you'll find the IP rating is independently verified for every one of the products. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to learn more about IP ratings, there's, uh, there's quite a lot of information, so you can decode the numbers for maybe machines that you already have, um, if you find that sort of stuff interesting. Mm -hmm. so, uh, okay, let's have a little look at the interface. As Danny's pointed out already, it's not too complicated, and I would like mm -hmm. to cut to a new camera, which is our overhead camera. Because for this, pr this presentation, we thought you might want to be able to see some of the, the screens, which mm -hmm. is a bit easier on a close-up camera on these smaller devices. Yeah, so. so Danny pointed out there aren't too many buttons on it. It's relatively straightforward. You've got your on and off button here. Okay, there you go, switches on, and then you've got your activation or your laser on button. Typically, when you start up the tool, the laser will be off for your mm -hmm. safety. This is a class two laser device. You don't want to be indiscriminately pointing this in people's eyes and such, especially if you're on a busy job site. Mm -hmm. So to activate the laser, you press that. Laser will activate. You won't be able to see it from that screen. And then I press it one more time, and it'll take a reading. So there you see, it's 2.913 meters from our desk to Lizzie's desk behind us, or in front of us. Okay, I'm gonna bring it up a little closer because I want to show you some of the additional features in the menu. So I just wanna show you, it's very simple, the UI isn't very complicated, and the tool itself is straightforward. So when it comes to settings, we have this one here, which is a continuous mode. See so your mode changes here, it flashes now, so if I were to activate the laser, it will be continuously on and take continuous measurements. If I press it one more time, you see now, We've got area mode, so you can see it's changed in meter squared. So I'll take my two values mm -hmm. and automatically calculate the area of a wall, for example. And then function three, now we can work out volume. Take three readings, you can see the three readings here. When I yeah? So what you've eliminated there with, with the functionality of the machine and what it can accomplish internally with its own processor um, would take two people, a tape measure, mm -hmm. pen, paper, um, and a calculator more than likely. Yes. Uh, and we'll, yeah, it'll take time, it'll take personnel. This is so much quicker. If you mm. wanted to uh, measure up the volume of a room, I mean, we're mm. talking about seconds. Okay, so yep. if, you, if you want to be productive, you want to get on site, you want to quickly get measured up, especially if you're doing a quote and you're getting paid for it, yeah. you want to be in and out as quickly as possible. You don't want to waste your precious time yeah. where, when you're not getting paid. When you're talking about um, room measurements for floor pans, for mm. even estate agents and stuff like that. Okay, if I cut back to the close, uh, the overhead one more time, okay. Uh, the last setting you've got here is you've got a bit of Pythag, okay. So this allows you to take, uh, work out uh, the, the height of a wall, for example, if you can't get access to it. This device uses two, two values, so you'd first take that first value, and then you will take the second value, and then it would calculate the height of a wall. Mm. When it gets to some of our other machines where we can do indirect measurements, it's more sophisticated, you need to take less values, okay. Maybe, I was going to demo that, I think I'll demo that in a, in a later one. So as you can see, the product's quite straightforward. Mm -hmm. There isn't too much to worry about. It's a nice, simple replacement for your analog device. Yeah. Is that a fair point? Yeah, no, I would say it's good. I mean, the other little advantage to this are obviously running double A, sorry, triple A batteries. Um, you've got a, a monochrome screen, mm -hmm. so you're not, go, you're not eating through batteries at a rate of knots with this, mach this machine. It's, um, it's quite efficient with the energy that it's yeah. got. And even, even if you were to find yourself running low on energy, it's not hard to replace these. You can no. pop into any shop, replace the batteries. But in my personal opinion, the runtime on these, as Danny's pointed out, is really, really long. Mm. Okay, so the GLM40, excellent entry-level product. Uh, it's been in it's been in the range for many years. As we always say, if it ain't broke, why fix it? Mm -hmm. This is all. If you're only needing a simple device for basic measurements, then the GLM40 is all you need. Okay, yeah. uh, and I always say whenever we have events and shows, it entirely depends on what you require as a tradesman. If you're just wanting to measure some stuff, if you want to do a bit of simple Pythag volume area, up to 40 meters, ideal. However, we've got lots of different products out there, as you can see on the side here. So you've got lots of choice depending on what your application is or what features you need. Mm. Do we want to touch briefly on the, how they operate? Yeah, please. Um, so basically on the top of the machine here, um, Got two cameras, too. there you go. So on here you have a couple of little windows. You've got one on the side here, which is where the laser is admitted from, and you've got a receiver just next to it. So what will happen is when you press the button, the, um, the beam of light will come out of here, uh, reflect off of the material that you're measuring to, and then be bounced back here. And that fraction of time that it takes for that to take place gives you an accurate laser measurement. Mm -hmm. Um, we've made a comment already about the fact that uh, the machine is designed to work up to 40 meters. Mm -hmm. There are some things you might want to consider. 
uh, ambient light is a consideration. If you're in extremely bright conditions, sometimes mm -hmm. you might find that the range is reduced just because the, the laser has to travel through all that interference and come back. Um, however, typically speaking, in normal everyday conditions, <laughs> in UK light, that's mm -hmm. normally not a problem. No. Um, and I think we also mentioned, uh, maybe I think we've mentioned our previous training sessions, not on the live streams, but we've talked about different materials as well. Yes. So it does matter on like the color of the material, white, perfect. Yep. Um, so white's of a highly re uh, reflective surface, so that will give you a reasonable measurement. Mm -hmm. um, when you're talking about dark materials that tend to absorb light, um, then, then you may be uh, running into a little yeah. bit of trouble. Or, or, or maybe highly reflective material yeah. where you won't get the bounce back. So yeah. these are all things you should consider, but typically mm. speaking, in your day-to-day, -day, it's a simple press the button, get your reading, not a problem. Yeah. Okay, so GLM 40, great machine. Let's see where we're going next. Before we talk about the next machine, let's have a little bit of a, a little history lesson. So let's have a look mm. at a predecessor machine. Right, so this is the predecessor that we've got to this particular, the, um, the, the new range of products that we're going to go through next. This is the GLM 50C. Um, again, this is up to 50 meters, this one, so a little bit more um, uh, distance than the, uh, the, the previous one we were looking at, by an ten, extra 10 uh, meters. Mm. And this is also a connected product as well. Yeah. So why do we bring out the 50? Because essentially this machine is, I believe it's discontinued. It's been discontinued because of the machine that's coming out now. So let's have a look at the next one, Dan. Let's bring it in. Right, so uh, this is the GLM 50-27C. Uh, yeah, Generation 2. So we've yes. got our Generation 150, and we've got our 20, uh, uh, yeah, our, 20, uh, our new 2 series machine. Mm. Okay, so what we want to discuss here before we move into the details of the machine is the fact that this product has had some radical changes to improve the robustness of the tool. Mm. It looks physically different, and there's a reason why. So if we quickly punch the overhead camera, I want to show you why. Okay, so this product, as you can see, is bigger. And the reason why it's bigger is because we've added extra features to it to make it more rugged, more substantial, more resistant to things like drop, fall damage, as, yep. well, as, as well as ingress, increasing the ingress protection. So with the GLM50, uh, the upgrade to now the, the Generation 2 is we reinforce the internal housing. Unfortunately, we haven't got an example to show you where we could take it apart, but trust yeah. me, what we've done is we've increased the skeletal structure inside. Yeah. All if, the indiv individual components internally are uh, basically just cordoned off from each other, so that structure really holds the material together, holds the yeah. machine together, far more rigid body. All right, so I mean, Although this tool is not weak, there is a tiny amount of flex. It's nothing to be worried about. It doesn't impair the device. It doesn't make the device weaker necessarily, mm. but there is a little bit of play. Because of that structure, there is, is absolutely no play in that machine at all. And that's to mm. do with the fact that we've improved the internal housing. That does give you some benefits in regards to the fact that um, we've got an improved drop value. So now we can drop these devices. These devices can quite happily be uh, well, we, we've tested and validated yeah. these can handle a 1.5 meter drop pretty fine. That's a 50% okay. increase on top of the, the traditional GLM mm. 50C. There's also improvements on these machines so far as scratch resistant glass as well. Um, and because of the design of the, of the front of the machine here, you can see the rubber comes up around the screen. Um, so that gives you more protection for the, uh, for the glass, obviously place it down like that, you haven't got to worry about yeah. scratching it or anything. Let's we'll see if I can show you that. You see uh, on the GLM 50, there is a little bit of a lip, so we, we obviously considered that before. Mm -hmm. And it's far more pronounced, in person, if you were to see this tool, far more pronounced, there's no problems with placing that machine screen down first, or if it was to fall out of your pocket, it reduces the chance of that screen getting caught. So all in all, a number of features that make this tool more robust, uh, better for you on the work site. The, the issue, there wasn't really an issue with the GLM50. It's mostly about perception. A lot of guys think these tools are delicate because they're electronic devices. It wasn't actually a problem. However, we decided to take this opportunity mm. with the Generation 2 to improve the product inside and outside. And as one of these features was the fact that we said we've made it more durable. As a, almost a secondary consideration, what happened there is it means we increased the IP rating from 54 now to 65. Yeah. So at IP65, six, IP6 first of all, that means this tool is dust proof. You're not going to get dust mm. inside that. It's great. It's not going to foul up the screen or the mechanism. Not a chance. When it comes to water ingress protection, now we're up to five. Yeah. So that means what we've done is we've added some rubber gaskets. We've improved the battery compartment, so that's sealed by a rubber gasket, which means that this can survive 
uh, pretty much any any normal weather conditions on site. It can handle water being thrown at it in all directions, mm -hmm. um, and without any worry about any water ingress. So from 50 IP54 to 65, a really good improvement. Yeah. So that's the difference between Gen 1 and our Gen 2. So let's have a little bit more look at this tool in particular. And this one is the, this is the GLM 50-22. Uh, so this is the entry level machine. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look first off, we'll go to the overhead camera. Okay, and you can see that if I actually bring in the 50 just to compare it, there are some, some minor differences in the UI. The buttons are bigger, they're rubberized, they're more tactile. So it's a great improvement. What I want to say is the on button is at the bottom here. And I think you're going to make a comment about the actual button itself, the activation button. Yeah, the, I mean, the color of the activation button indicates the, uh, the color of the laser as well on here. So if you um, and your friend or your, your colleague on your, on your work site have similar machines, um, obviously if you've got a green one and he's got a red one, then he tells <laughs> them apart. Yeah. So the activation button is now replaced by uh, this button here. Same as before, same as the GLM40. It's a simple one button operation in this feature mode. Now, if I bring it up, up nice and close, I want to be able to show you some of the additional features. Because as we showed with the GLM40, that had basic settings. These have very similar settings, but it also has a few extra features. So if we go into the function mode, you'll see that the UI has changed. Now it's this rotational wheel. Yeah, the user interface is far more, far yeah. smoother on this now. Now, it might be hard for you to see in some of these screens because of reflections, but this one is measuring length. Go around to the wheel, you see you now have continuous measurement. Just like the previous machine, you have area, volume, and then you've also got your indirect height or your Pythagoras. One of the extra features that we've added here to improve the UI, let's go into continuous measurement, for example. We can go in and we've got a number of different settings. So now we've got min-max, we've got big numbers. So this one's excellent, it's in continuous. You can see, nice and easy to read. And we also have a tape measure function here. Oh, sorry. So if you want to use it like a digital tape measure, if this is what you fancy, you can also do that with this model, which is an improvement over the last tool. It's, it's important to note as well that both, all of these machines can be changed between metric and imperial, so you haven't got to scrabble around looking for an imperial tape measure should you need one. Correct. One change in the UI, let's go to area for example. If you want to, you can now activate, the, you can press the little tool, the settings button here and it will give you a little introduction into how to use that application. Right, the screens have been improved on this new generation two devices compared to the first one, which allows us to have this more infographic way of displaying mm. the information on how the settings work. So here you see area and you can see each, you've got four stages here telling you exactly what you do. Here you can see it saying, take that first reading, take that second reading, there's your tick, you've worked out the area of the wall. And that feature applies to all the different feet, all the different functions. So volume will be exactly the same. There you go. So what do you want to work out? Take your first value, second value, third value. Now you have the area volume. Mm. So the UI, we've improved uh, how the actual UI of the tool works, making sure that if you're not quite sure what's, how to do something, you can just press that little button at the bottom and it'll tell you what. Same here for indirect height. We explained it previously, but here I can show you again a nice little infographic saying, what do you want to work out? You want to work out this value, but unfortunately it's interrupted because there's a little shelf between the window and the ceiling. Take that first value, angle it up, and there you go, you've got your value. So we've made it nice and simple for you to understand how to use this tool. When it comes to other features, uh, I think, let's just go back to the main screen quickly, actually. You see, let's have a look at some of the UI. I'll, I'll change it back to just a normal measure mode, quickly. You can see you've got your numbers here for your distance measured, your mode. Here you've got where the measurement is coming from. So this is now saying that the tool is measuring the distance from the back of the tool. So it's including the length of the tool in the measurement. And then you've got your battery indicator. If you want to change that, which is an excellent feature on this tool, then you can go across here and you can change your preference level. So now you can change it to if you want to measure it from the front, which is beneficial, or if you want to measure it from the middle, because this has a tripod mount, then you can change it there. Mm. Let's go back quickly, because I've also done one other thing, which is set our favorite saying here. So I've got one button at the front here, which I've already preset, and I decided I wanted to preset where the 
the distance has been measured because that's probably the most frequent thing I'll change and I can cycle through all the different presets from the back to the front to the tripod mount. So you can, you can, you can set this tool up however you mm. fancy to make it more efficient for you. And just to make the point there, there's a tripod mount I was talking about, a nice metal tripod mount. So yeah. we, I forgot to mention we've also improved the tripod mount compared to the 50, which was a, a plastic mount changed it to a metal mount. So we've improved, again, even improved the tripod mount robustness. Yeah. So, um, I mean, that's in a nutshell. We've obviously talked about the robustness. Uh, we've talked about what we've done to change the product uh, from the UI perspective, up taking advantage of all the updated software and hardware. Mm -hmm. um, we can go on and talk about some of the later machines, but first off, let's stop for some questions, shall we? Lizzie, what have you got? Sure. Lewis Alexander has left a lot of lovely comments, so oh. we'll dive into those. Yep. Starts with, good to catch this one, been away with health, health issues. Hope you're all right. Hope you're all right, too. Yeah, there is. Yep. is there a laser measure with Bluetooth or USB support I could connect to my iPhone? I need a measurement tool where my iPhone can speak measurements out as a blind cabinet maker. What I'd like to achieve is a portable device which I can carry with my iPhone so that when measuring materials with a stop, I can listen to measurements, etc. Also log for use with software. Would you consider developing a digital tape measure? I ask as a blind cabinet maker as trying to get a decent and accurate measurement either requires sighted help or tactile tools which are a faff. Mm. So, I mean, we aren't going to be, I mean, part of the presentation today, we were considering whether or not we'll start talking about some of our connectivity options. Mm -hmm. We do have a measure on app. Um, yep. I think because we don't have enough time to talk about the entire range of GLMs as well as the measurement app, Mm -hmm. um, but I think we'll revisit that because I think there are some accessibility advantages. Using the app. There is vocal feedback through the app. So mm -hmm. if you had that included on your phone, for example, um, that would work perfectly. Obviously, your phone screen is going to be a bit small to do the uh, floor plan side of the measure on app. Mm -hmm. We'll cover that at a later date with one of the other live streams. Um, but so far as a vocal feedback for measurements, then yes, yeah, that would mm -hmm. be perfect. I and mean, we've already got haptics as well in some of the machines, so we're going to cover that off. Yeah. shortly as well. So. Yeah, so I think a, a partial solution for possibly for you, I think feel free to talk to us offline and we can see what mm. exact requirements you require, what we already have as a solution. The Measure One app isn't finalized, it's out there in the market. So it's free in the market, obviously, but it's out there on Apple Store uh, and Android devices. Mm -hmm. um, I think getting as much feedback as we can to improve our accessibility when it comes mm. to our measurement tools would be excellent. Although I think we've already started making the steps with that app. Yeah, although it might sound obvious, if you're looking to buy a machine to, to take full advantage of that, it needs to be a C one for the connectivity. Correct, yeah. This is an interesting idea. He said he'd be willing to help develop a Bosch digital physical tape as it would change the lives of people with visual impairments and sight loss for the better. Yeah, we'll definitely yeah. take feedback. Yeah, I mean, um, we're in direct contact with our product managers. If you're talking about improving a physical, physical uh, tape measure, mm -hmm. uh, fully open to hearing any ideas on that, yeah. yeah. And then we've got a comment from sixovercrest.com. I know this isn't a laser-related question, but will there be any developments on the L boxes? Also, any update on clothing or workwear? You are sold out, so I was curious if there was a revision coming. Thanks. So L boxes. Um, other than we've got the extra large L box to house yep. some of our machines, uh, we aren't really re we're not looking at changing the mobility solutions to the L box system, as far as I'm aware. Not really. The sort of most systems pretty well established at the moment, anyway. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, I think it's pretty much doing the job that we need it for. I mean, obviously, different machines are going to come out, so different solutions may need to be addressed. But um, at the moment, I haven't heard anything no. about L box design. Yeah, and, and when it comes to our, our workwear, um, no, there's been no revisions. Um, I think te it, it technically, we already are in a version two from our, from our yes, heated workwear. from last year onwards, mm. I believe. Um, but there's been no changes since. You may find stock issues, or probably because it's getting colder. Yeah, I was going to imagine. So. Yeah, that's yeah. Probably, that's <laughs> all, all it is. It's just all the reason. Yeah, um, and we probably were going to do a. I think we mentioned it already that we yeah. were going to do a ah, probably a pre-Christmas. Pre-Christmas live stream just on our workwear range. I think so. with pencils in the 21st, I think, haven't yeah. we? Okay. So, so uh, yeah. stay tuned for that. Yeah. Right, so I think that's the questions for now. Uh, let's carry on with our presentation. We've discussed, obviously, the first machine within the new GLM 50 series, mm -hmm. the GLM 5022. Uh, it's a red line laser. 
it's, sorry, red laser. It's up to 50 meters and it has a number of fundamental features that we've had on our previous machines. So what we want to do next is we want to have a look at what's next in the range, which is going to be Dan. Right, so on this one, we're looking at the GLM 5025G. Um, so we've actually um, reached out now into the um, the, the green laser beam for these mm -hmm. ones. So again, for visual acuity, um, a lot of people find that these are a lot easier to see over longer distances. Um, I think the human eye is more um, receptive to a, a green as a colour. That's right. Um, so it, it, allows, it allows you to see it more. I mean, at, at 50 metres, it's unlikely that you're going to see it anyway. But um, mm. just, just to know where you're, you're measuring from. Well, depending on the lighting conditions, if it's, mm. if it's, if it's indoors, you probably be able to, you, I say probably, yes, you definitely can see a green light, a green beam, and to a degree, of course, to see the red beam mm. at 50 meters indoors. Um, it doesn't improve the range, so the, a lot of people think maybe green lasers travel further, so the tool will actually go further. Mm. No, they're both GLM 50s, they both have a maximum measurement distance of 50 meters, but as Danny said, green is more perceptible to some up to four times more visible for certain individuals. So actually seeing the dot, which is important when you're measuring, because you need to point it at something, it's up to four times more visible for some people. Uh, if you want to get nerdy, the reason is because the human eye actually perceives green far better, um, the, the green spectrum. Uh, we see about, about 25% of the red, red light spectrum, mm. but we see 100% of green. So that's why people typically will perceive green more, yeah. more uh, much better. Um, and obviously a lot of people, a lot of you guys out there understand that and you know that's why green lasers are at a premium. So there's a slight, slight price increase for a green laser. It's a more sophisticated laser. Yeah. Well, so when it comes to the specs and settings, um, mm. essentially the 25 is very similar mm. to the 22. It has the same feature set, yep. except now we've got a G model machine. There is one slight difference, however. It yes. has the same features, but this has a haptic feedback. Exactly. I'll see if I can get to do it now on the, on the microphone so you can hear it. Um, there you go. Hopefully you can hear that. that. But, um, yeah, it gives you a haptic feedback to let you know that you've actually taken the measurement. Uh, very useful if you're wearing ear defenders on the workplace or uh, or you actually can't see the screen when you're taking the measurement. So if you're inverted or you're in an awkward position, um, it gives you a, 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 a feedback to tell you that the, the, the measurement was successful. So if you can see on the screen here, we've got the two devices lined up and you can see they have the same feature set. You can see, however, that the, we've changed the fascia, so there's a bit. So you can see there's a difference between the machines. Uh, the, the product names are on the back, but you can see here you have the blue fascia for the 22. This is the entry level one. Now this, which is our mid range, you can see that you've got a blue and a black fascia at the front here. But you can see the same number of settings. As Danny pointed out, this is a green laser one, so you see it's very clearly got a green button to denote that. So there's no misunderstanding. And top there, that's it. Might be able to just see that. Yeah, oh, yep. Oh. Uh, I'll find oh, it. There it is. I'll find it. There it is. And up at the top here, sometimes it'll work. Uh, it says it's also got green, green laser at the top here, making it nice and clear. Okay, so um, we don't want to spend too long talking about this because I want to talk about really the top end, top end machine. Mm. So 22, 25. However, there is another machine we want to talk about. Yep, so the next one in the lineup is the GLM 5027C. So, again, a couple of more improvements on this one as well. Um, again, this is the red, red beam version. This, um, one, this one's the C, not the CG, so it's just the graphic coming up. Right, That's okay. Yep. So, yeah, the C, um, which means uh, you can tell it's a C because it's, got, it's a red line laser, so they've got the red button here. Yep. And um, just like the previous models, it has all the same feature sets, however, we've got additional ones to add to it. So I think what I should do is talk about the, the features inside the, the mode here. So you can see, hopefully, if I was to show a comparison between this model and the other models, you can see there's actually a lot more options here. Yes, yeah, a bit got, busy on the mode wheel, isn't it? Yeah, so you've got your length, you've got your continuous measurement like before, you've got your area, volume. Where it starts to become different is we've got our indirect measurements. On the previous machines, we only had one. And then what you had to do there is you had to take two values, an initial value and then an angled value. Here, now what we've got is we've got indirect height measurements, indirect length, and you've got a double indirect height. Mm. And how this works is you take a single measurement and it's got an internal in kilometer. So let's do, let's do a height one. Okay, if you cut back to camera, let's camera one first, and I'll show you what we're gonna be doing. There you go. So I'm gonna pretend this is a wall that we want to measure. 
And what I'm going to do is, first off, I'm going to take a reading from the bottom here. Probably heard the haptic there. Tilt it, and then take another value. And now if I cut to the close-up cam, overhead, sorry, you can see out of those two values and the uh, sorry, I said took two values. I only need to take one, silly me. Uh, I took the top value there, and it said that uh, it's, it's about 31.3 centimeters tall, which is yeah. about which is about right actually. Okay. Now, as you can see, if I were to press it once there, you see what it's indicating here is that blue line flashing, saying that's the value you need to take. So mm -hmm. I didn't need to take that first setting. Mm -hmm. That's how you take it on one of the older devices because it has an inclinometer. I can angle that here. You can see that value is changing. I only need to take the one value pointing at the top of the wood. That means mm. it'll automatically calculate. But yeah, by working on the album, the angle and also the distance between the the emit, <coughs> sorry, the emitter and the target, um, it works out the uh, the distance of the hypotenuse if you really want to use. Exactly. <laughs> now, cutting again, cutting back to the overhead, so I can show you some more of the features. Uh, another thing you've got here is wall area. I'm going to use the little FAQ mode so I can illustrate exactly what that is. This is excellent for painters, especially if you're doing multi walls. Mm. It calculates the area of walls of a wall, but then you can extend it. So if you're doing multiple walls here, you can see I want to measure different measurements across walls. Take your first value, take your second value, and then your third value, that fourth value, and there you go. It'll add up all of them, all of them together. So you don't have to take mm. multiple wall area and then add it up yourself. You can get, you can get the tool to do it all itself. So that's a nice little additional feature. Now, another one is the stakeout function. Okay, so what you can do here is you can set a preset distance. I've mm -hmm. decided to pick 60 centimeters or 0.6 meters. That's okay. typically a good distance for wall studs. Yep. And what you can do then is if we cut to, again, the camera one, I'm just going to show you exactly what we're doing mm -hmm. here. And hopefully, I'll show you the overhead. Let's pretend this is our wall. We set this device up as a stakeout. We'll press the button, and oh. it'll go into continuous measurement oh. mode. I'll move the wall back. There you go. It makes it easier. That's right. So pretend you're moving the tool away. Once that gets to 60 centimeters, keep going. Really? There you go. Makes an audible, audible note and says, here's your, six, here's your 0 0.6 meter mark. Mark it on the wall. Place your stake. Yep. Move on. Provided you know where one stud is, you can find all of them from there on. Exactly. I said, I said stake, stud. But yeah. I was think, in my head, I was thinking about uh, fences. So you can yeah. set this for six foot. Yeah. Yeah, for fence posts, anything mm -hmm. like that. OK, so that's the stakeout feature. And there's a couple of other ones, I think. Let's do the, keep with the overhead camera. You can see there's this feature here. Look at that. What a perfect desk you've made, Dan. Yep. <laughs> so you can use it in this mode. Or if I cut to camera two, I can turn it on its side. And then you can have a, a oh, that's, that's the carpet. That must be the carpet, mate. So you've got the choice. You can use it in either mode to have a very simple inclinometer. Yeah. So it's an excellent feature. So this is one of the one of the many benefits in getting the 27 model over the 22 and the 25. These additional features, uh, as you probably heard, it also has the haptic feature that you have with 25. But all these extra features really, really benefit you. Mm. Um, this is a connected tool because it obviously has the the Bluetooth button, uh, like the. And uh, uh, as opposed to the previous two models, this is the first one that has connectivity. Mm -hmm. So when we were talking about the Measure On app, this is the first tool that is fully compatible with that, allowing you yeah. to take readings off the device and transmit them automatically to either your plans or just to save the settings within the, uh, the Measure On app. Yeah. Right, so GLM 5027C, let's move on to another machine. Right, so the next one in the lineup is the GLM 5027CG. So again, looking uh, very similar to the previous machine um, with a couple of major changes. Um, green, green laser. Yep, I mean, it's, it's a, just a minor incremental increase, mm -hmm. but yep, where is it? There you are. There you go. You see the two, all, the only difference now yep. is you can now have a green beam laser. Yep. So if you want to be state of the art, if you want to have potentially improved visibility, Green beam laser is the one that you'd want to go for. But functionally, they are the same. Yeah, we've got we've all got, the same feature sets. We've got pri both price points covered there. Now, I, I, did we talk about the specs of the 50? I can't remember. As we've, uh, we've discussed, all, mm. the tools that we've, all the tools that we've been talking about today are all, ha all ha have a, a range of 50 meters with the GLM 50s. They all have the same accuracy of 
plus and minus 1.5 millimeter from t uh, a range of 10 meters, yeah. and all the GLM 52 series are they all IP65 rated? So there hasn't been any change in the externals. They're all the same. They're just as robust. The accuracy is the same. Uh, the visibilities have changed between the green beam lasers and the red lasers, uh, and there has been some changes in the functionality. So these have more functions and some connectivity. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's all horses for courses when it comes to 50. We've, we, we've done, what we've done with the Generation 2 GLM 50s is we've taken the tried and tested GLM 50C and we've, we've split the features across multiple different products. So now you've got more versatility. You don't have to buy the, all the yeah. features at once. You can pick and choose which product is more suitable for you so, and pick that one. So now you're not, you're not buying a product with features that you don't necessarily need. Mm -hmm. Now we've got one final version of this tool. It's not a different machine, but there is a different version out there in the market if you show, choose. So yeah, this is the um, basically exactly the same machine as the last one. Um, they are identical in pretty much every way, except this one comes with an additional item in the uh, in the pack. So you can see, as you can see, the battery compartment on here looks an awful lot different than the than the previous one. So pop the little cap under at the bottom if I can get my I shouldn't chew my nails. You can see just there, there is a USB-C charging socket and this battery compartment comes away. There you go. So it's got a little lithium ion battery pack in there. So they're fully rechargeable batteries. Um, again, you being USB-C, dead easy to charge it up in the van. Mm -hmm. You'd always be at full capacity when you get to a job site. Yep. Um, um, the actual lithium ion battery itself actually has more power or more uh, amps compared mm. to your traditional AA batteries. So mm. yeah, it's, it's not necessarily just more convenient, which, but it is more convenient because you can just charge it whenever you want, but you actually get more runtime out of this device. Mm. And more importantly, um, you do get this machine with a norm, the, this variation, this, this retail version mm. with a normal back cover. Yep, so comes you, with a normal back, back cover and batteries as well, I believe. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So mm. you've got complete flexibility. If for whatever reason the lithium-ion battery were to go flat, because you've used it a lot, trust me, mm -hmm. you'd have to use it a lot before, without charging it for that to drain, mm -hmm. you could just pop in some normal batteries. Not a problem. Yeah. So there you go. Okay, so I think we'll, we'll, I think we should summarise what we've got here just for this one ra this one range of machine, which is the GLM50. So we start, we ended with mm -hmm. this version, which is the lithium-ion one. See if I can get them all on the desk. Then we went from we've got the 5027. Oh no, fifty twenty. Jumbled them all up again. Yeah, I know. Fifty twenty seven <laughs> CG. Okay, so that's the same machine, just different battery. Then we've got the GLM fifty twenty seven C, which is the red light uh, twenty seven version, model twenty seven, but with red line. Then we had the twenty five G, and then we have the GLM twenty two. So you can see, there's a lot of variation. It might seem complicated, but honestly, it's not. I mean, maybe what we could do is we could just put a link in the chat sending you to our, our web page so you can see all the different variations in these machines. Uh, a nice simple sh cheat sheet showing you what features the machines have and what they don't. Yeah. They're not complicated to understand. It's basically horses for courses. These two machines are excellent if you just need basic settings, basic measurements, volume area. If you're working in a workshop, perfect. Mm -hmm. You've got the choices of using green beam laser and also having haptics, there's a double upgrade here, so you have the vibe, you have haptic feedback, so that's excellent if you uh, can't see the screen uh, or you can't hear it because you're in a noisy environment. If it's overhead, for example, you get that vibration feature, the haptic feedback, so you know you've taken the value reading. Um, if you um, then move up to the other models, like the 27s, these all have those haptic features, but they also have additional features like the inclinometer, the ability to do double indirect, mm -hmm. and then as you can see, you can move up to the connected versions, both of these are connected, sorry, but you can move up to the connected G version mm. and all the way up to the complete Rolls Royce, we'll say. I don't know if I can say Rolls Royce. Um, you can go up to the absolute top end one, which is the GLM5027 CG, but now you can add on that lithium ion pack for extra flexibility. Yeah. So, mm. plenty of products here to choose from. Mm. So, let's have a quick pause because that's our big, big section there. Let's see if we've got any, any questions, Lizzie. Yeah, we've got. In reference to the L box question, um, some more detail. The boxes are great and certainly do the job, but finding inserts is an absolute nightmare. My van is stacked with L boxes. Yeah, fair, fair point. Yeah. Uh, I do have a spreadsheet actually in my office um, with part numbers for um, inlays. I'm quite happy to look for uh, look for them for you. So if you wanted to contact us. Um, I'll certainly check on there. I'm not guaranteed that we'll have them in stock. They are a little bit hard to come by, but sometimes we do get lucky. Mm. Then we've got another one, Matthew Tucker. Hi guys at Bosch. 
The green laser measure is amazing. CLM, GLM 50C, um, green laser. It's an amazing product. I tested it and still using. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know if I caught what model that was. Uh, was it 25, 27? But either one, both, both models are excellent. Again, just to clarify, the, the accuracy and the range of all these machines are exactly the same. Uh, visibility does vary between the, the red laser and green laser, depending on you as an individual. Um, and there are obviously different features, but all machines are extremely accurate. Mm. And 50 meters, as we've discovered with the, the GLM 50C, 50 meters is like that Goldilocks. It's like the perfect distance mm. for the majority of people out there, especially mm. if you're just working indoors, 50 meters should be uh, enough for most of applications. Mm. Okay. Just because I didn't mention it before, obviously, if you're going to drop me a line, line regarding those L box inlays, um, do it on the social media channel. Just pop a comment in the bottom, and I'll uh, I'll take a look into that for you. Yeah, no problems. Right. So um, now that I've made that comment about the GLM 50 being an, an excellent product for uh, indoors mm -hmm. or well anything within 50 meters, as you can imagine, let's have a look at products that go a little bit further than that because we've got some revisions to our longer range. When you finders. say a little bit further, this does in actual fact double. The mm. distance. So this is the uh, the GLM 100-25C. Um, so mm. another mouthful there. Um, so as you can see, this is this is a, a, a lot different design from the from the previous previous range. Yeah, we'll explain why as well. Mm. Uh, the machine, ha uh, the device has a measuring range of uh, 0 0.08 meter, uh, meters mm. to up to 100 meters. Again, it's variable in conditions, but we'll show you why you can use this tool outdoors, which is primarily what it's used for: long distance and mm. outdoors. Like all our machines, it has an accuracy of 1.5 millimeters per 10 meters, which yep. is great. Again, super accurate consistent with all the other previous products. Uh, it's a slightly different design because it's, uh, it's an IP54, so it, it cannot be as robust as the previous machines. But mm. in these particular cases, you know, there's some compromise because this machine gives you a lot more additional functionality. Mm. It runs off three AA batteries, so it's a slightly different interface. Uh, you'd get a little pouch. I think we've got an example there. Um, yep. Pouch. There's a pouch there. A little lanyard as well, so plenty of little accessories just to get keep, keep mm. the machine safe on site. So you don't have to worry too much about it being only, I say only 54, 54 is plenty for the average job site. Mm. Um, so I guess we could argue what makes it so different. Mm. Let's pop over to the overhead camera and I'll show you. The biggest and most obvious reason is you've got a really large screen here. So the reason we have a screen is even if you have a device that is measuring uh, over 50 meters, as Danny pointed out, mm. despite the fact that the tool can measure distances over well, up to 100 meters, it's going to be very hard for you to see that dot, especially mm. in bright light where you might not be able to visibly see it. So what this device has, it actually has a camera. So I think I can switch the device on. And I can activate the camera here. You can see that allows you now to... There you go. Got to tidy up the desk now. There you go. There you go. Oh, so I should put it here, make it a bit easier. You can see here you've got a little camera and then what you can do is you can then zoom in on that image up to four, four times zoom and then you can take your value reading. So that's, that's about just 70 centimeters ash across yeah. the desk there. So why is this an advantage? You can see also you've got a little reticule here that's actually green and when the laser is activated it disappears and you take your value rating there. So why is that useful? As I said, because if you're working in really long distances you might not necessarily be able to see the, uh, the, the, the dot. Yeah. Especially if you're working in bright daylight, that allows you to just to view, use the use the screen to view as a viewfinder, as a reticule yeah. to point out what you need to take your value. I'd, I'd probably, when you're using this machine, choose a large area to as a target, um, something that's a, a parallel to well, perpendicular to where you're taking the measurement, but mm -hmm. larger than average because you stand more of a chance of hitting it with the. Uh, with the camera. That's right. I mean, this machine has a tripod mount on the back, so I would thoroughly recommend using that. It helps with accuracy. Yep. Uh, the screen itself uh, is obviously, as you see, it's a digital viewfinder, uh, and it has a high contrast IPS color display. So that really helps you understand what you're looking at. See, I'm pointing it up, up at the ceiling there, so you can't really see much there. But a high resolution IPS color display makes it really nice and easy. The, the screen itself is nice and scratch resistant. As I said, the product itself is IP54, so plenty of, plenty of protection. If I pop it on the block, I'll show you some of the extra features. And you'll see very quickly, overhead cam please. 
There you go, thank you. You'll see the, the update of the UI, and this is all things you're already familiar with when you were looking at the GLM50. So the mm. Generation 2, this is also a Generation 2 product, that's why it's a 1025. Okay, generation 2 product, and you can see you've got all the different settings. You've got length, area, volume, you've got your indirect measurements just like you had with the 5027. So this has all the top end features. You have wall area, you have your stakeout function, and also you have your in kilometer. So this has all the same features as the top end GLM50, uh, with the addition now that you've got a little camera, and because you can use the device in multiple orientations, you've also got an activation button on the top here. So if you're using it on its side, then you can activate it more conveniently. Mm. Um, if we, one feature down I think we were going to mention is the fact that this one also has. It has a, uh, a, a rear stake. So basically this automatically puts it into um, the measurement from this rear point here. Uh, this is perfect for measuring for into corners. Mm. So if you're doing coving or taking a measurement from the corner of a room, um, then this gets right into the corner. It's that instead of doing an indirect measurement, it just this allows you to do a contacted measurement. Yeah. And that is automatically done when you press the button on the back here that flips the pin out, It'll automatically go into the sc uh, screen for reference level so you can confirm which one you want. And as you can see, you've got all the other settings. So you can select it from the rear, from the tripod mount, or from the front as before. You fold that back in. You fold that back in, it will just go back to whatever the last default setting was. So on this particular one, it's the rear. So, I mean, it's 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 pretty much everything you need. Mm -hmm. um, same similar features. Uh, put it back on the block. See on the screen, you've got nice big values. You've got your inclinometer value like uh, reading here. Bluetooth connectivity, whether it's on or off. You've got your battery charge. You've got your date. You've got more. You've got more screen essentially compared to the GLM50. So you've got yeah. plenty of more real estate or screen space to put mm -hmm. more information. Saving your features, going to your modes. And that's your. That's the current mode setting there. You can see it's just a normal laser mm -hmm. measure mode. The so, advantage of this machine over and above the last hundred meter measure that we did, uh, we've got brand new software, mm -hmm. new processors. It's all up to speed. It's all cutting edge stuff in there. Yeah. So just like we saw, just like we said before about the functionality. Got the little question mark button here. So instead, it's, instead of it being the, the little cogwheel button at the bottom, you've got a button here, and then you can go here and you can see all the different instructions telling you stage one, stage two, stage three, and then you get your value. So the UI, we've, we've had more sc screen, so we can make the actual prompts much quicker and much, uh, much clearer, mm. but essentially all the same features as the GLM50. Yeah, you're talking about almost virtually no delay between pressing the button and receiving the measurement, so very quick no, now. Exactly. So, I mean, that is the GLM50-25C, excellent machine, uh, up to 100 meters detection range, mm -hmm. uh, measurement range, sorry. Uh, what would you, what could you ask for, what else could you ask for? Well, I think you could chuck another 50 meters onto that. I think that's a good shout, okay, so that's there. a good shout. So we have the, uh, the 150, so this is the GLM150-27C, um, looks fairly straightforward, fairly similar to the last machine, there's some differences regarding the coloring around the screen to differentiate it between the two. Um, but yeah, 150 meters this one does. So yeah, yeah, using exactly the same functionality. Um, doesn't have a battery bay at the rear as well. It is uh, USB, yes, micro, micro USB chargeable. This one. Got to the overhead so. camera. I can show you that clearly. So yeah. it's hidden here. I say hidden. It's just situated here behind the, the pin. Yep. And it folds back like that. Nice and simple. When it comes to the UI, I'll just stay on the overhead camera. You can see that essentially everything is as before. There we go. So no, no significant change to the UI, uh, with the other fact that we've just got a camera button here, so nothing, to, nothing too confusing. Uh, not a problem. As you said, it just has the ability to switch on the camera. And you can see you've got your yeah. multi-stage multi zoom. Shuffle it a little bit, Chris. Yeah, it's hard for you to see, but yeah, multi-zoom. So you can put it on your tripod, dial in, zoom in exactly where you want to point your point of measurement from, press the button, take your reading, and there you go. It's a little bit further off to the edge of the wall there, 2.147 meters. So you can see that the, the UI is very similar between the two. All, that you, all you're really determining here is if whether or not you require a little bit more range for um, taking measurements from 
maybe trying to measure the height of a, a rel relatively tall building, for example, um, being them both outside, or if you've got really large halls, you're doing large room partitions, mm. whatever. If you need more range, then you've got the choice between the 120, uh, sorry, the 100 meters and the 150. I think we used, to, I say, I think we used to have 120, mm -hmm. uh, the GLM 120, but now what we've got is we've we've differentiated those into two different products, so you don't have, you, you can pick whichever one you want, 100, 100 uh, meters or 150, depending on extra range. Yeah. Feature set, they're roughly the same. They've got pretty much the same features. Yeah. Uh, let me have a quick double check to show you. Yeah. Uh, there's there's very there's only a few slight differences between the two machines. Obviously, the 150 has a few more extra features compared to the the 100. Um, I think I don't know what to say. They 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 pretty much sell themselves, to be honest. Mm. When it comes to the product, they're both um, IP54. They both have class two lasers. They both have the same accuracy of plus or minus 1.5 millimeters per 10 meters. Same scratch resistant glass. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're both connected. So both tools will uh, work perfectly happy with the measuring app. So you've got lots and lots of different things you can do with these tools. It completely depends on what you require as a tradie, professional, et cetera, et cetera. So let's have a quick pause. I think let's nearly come up to five o'clock. So any, any questions, Lizzie? Yep, from Callum, in regards to the 18 volt router and first fix nailer coming, hopefully next year, will there be any cool Bosch style innovations on them, like the, like the user interface on the second fixer? Hmm. Uh, a user interface, like a HMI. I wonder. Um, I haven't actually seen the products yet, mm -hmm. so um, difficult for me to comment on that. Yeah, I think it's difficult for both of us to comment. Mm. They're, they're, they're still in development. Um, I can't say I've seen a model of the product mm. yet. We know it is coming, uh, but I can't tell you too much more about it. Whether or not it will have a, a HMI, a human machine interface, it entirely depends on what kind of functionality you require. With the current second fixed nailer, for example, mm -hmm. um, the, the, the typical control panel for that is, is all it needs to be. You've got mm. your, your on and off button and the ability to change from continuous to bump fire. That seems all you'd need. I'd mm -hmm. um, be interested to know what kind of features or extra features or uh, functionality that would require a dedicated HMI, like some of our brush, uh, by turbo brushless machines, you mm -hmm. think it requires. Um, and the, the other question about the router. Uh, yeah, I agree. I, I'm really looking forward to our 18 volt router. Uh, I haven't seen much update on that recently, uh, but I do know that it's in development. And trust me, yeah. me and Danny are very keen to have that because that fills a very important gap in our, our portfolio that you know mm. we all agree that needs yeah. to be done. As soon as we receive a marketing sample, which we get sent through beforehand, um, and we get the green light, we'll be showing you first thing. So, mm. yeah, it'll be straight on social media. Lewis Alexander says that he's not on Facebook or Twitter. How can he contact you to discuss the design of a digital physical table supporting accessibility? He's a developer for Assistive Solutions. Is there an email address that we could give him? I've sent Lewis an email before, so he should have my email in his um, hopefully sent folder. But I will hunt you down, um, <laughs> Lewis, and I'll send you a quick reminder with my email on it. It's not a problem. There you go. Perfect. And then one more from Rob. Glad I've just managed to tune in. Got to love these guys. Also, big happy birthday to Chris. I believe he's 28 today. 28, yes. <laughs> That's right. I must be 28. Maybe add a few numbers to that, maybe. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, I was hoping to sneak away without uh, admitting that. Yes, I'm here, I'm working, I'm doing a live stream on my birthday. That's dedication for you, I'm mm. sure. Uh, but I couldn't miss out. I mean, I'm a big fan of the measuring tools, Percy. I'm a bit of a techie guy. Um, it's hard to do an hour. We've had, really mm. had to condense a lot of information into an hour for just the measuring tools. Mm. Um, I could talk at great length with some demonstration showing exactly how to use every single feature, but I'm pretty sure that I would bore you guys to death. I know I bore Dan to death when yep. I talk about laser measures yeah, on the regular. Out, yeah. But I did think that this, this, this live stream, as well as some of the other live streams on our, measuring, our professional measuring tool range, are in order. So I think um, there's a good chance we might do, what do you think, cross-line lasers? Cross-line lasers, good, yeah. Yep, I'm yeah. going to excite you guys with cross-line lasers next, well, in the next couple of weeks, probably. Yeah. Um, we've got any more questions, I think? I think we do. From Ian, any update on the rollout of AmpShare partner products? Particularly interested in Mato grease guns, or will Bosch bring one out? Every other company has one available. Mm. Well, I've heard rumours. I, yeah. I can only use the word rumours, mm -hmm. uh, that there is going to be a Bosch professional grease gun. Uh, I do believe, uh, don't quote me on this, but I do believe, uh, I think, I think, I might be wrong here, that some of our premium partners 
uh, when the amateur partners might have a grease gun, but I'll have to double check that. Uh, mm. it's, a, it's a task in itself, knowing all of the Bosch professional power tools that we've got on our range. Mm. Uh, learning all the amateur partner ones is a challenge in itself. So yeah. we'll, um, we'll have a look at that one. Um, but just a sneak peek, I've heard rumors, yes, that there is going to be a Bosch professional grease gun. Mm. So I think that's, uh, keep, an eye out, keep an eye out for that. I think it's as much as I can say at yeah. this stage. Okay, so I think that's the, all the questions on my internal clock and my watch is saying it's nearly five o'clock. So I think what we'll do very quickly is we'll just do a quick summary because that'll probably be a nice way to tie up the live stream and talk about all the different products we've got and then we'll probably call it, call it an afternoon and yeah. I can go and have some birthday cake. Yeah. <laughs> so let's start backwards, guys. Let's cut to the wide. So let's start off with the absolute top end machine. We're talking about the GLM 150-27C. Okay, then we went back to the GLM 100 and, oh sorry, 100 and 20, 100-25C, and then we had our wide range, wide range of GLM 50s. So from the 27s, 25, 27s, 25, 22, <laughs> yeah, the predecessors, the good old GLM 50C, still out in the market. Yep. I know we don't sell it direct anymore because it's discontinued, but there's plenty, plenty within the range. And then, uh, well, I'll put that one there. Still in the range, but replaced by the 5020s. And then you've got your good old GLM 40. Mm. So as you can see, it is a wide range of choices out there. So any, you've got a laser measure that fits your budget and your requirement as a tradie, user, professional, whatever. Thank you very much for watching this live stream today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've definitely enjoyed talking <laughs> about professional laser measures. So thank you very much for myself. And for me too. Thank you. Great.